Hello and back again to the seventh part of programming with the Bitwig API. In this episode, we will look into using remote parameter banks to control your devices. And since we want to use the knobs and buttons for different things, we need to invent something I call a mode and we will see about this later. Before we dive into that, someone asked me about a specific problem, which we will see if you select from your device a track which is outside of the visible view in Bitwig. This is not really nice to have. So for example, if I select now tracks here, you will see this will be out of the view in Bitwig. For that, there are specific functions in your API. If you look into the channel interface, which is also implemented by the track, you will see there are two functions for that. One is called make visible and arranger and the other one in the mixer. And if you call one of them, so the mixer one will make Make it visible here in the mixer so it will scroll the mixer and the other one will make it visible here in the range of view you can also call both so we'll always see your track second thing i wanted to show you is something called pinning as you saw in the last tutorial the cursor track will always follow the selection in, in bitwig as well so we can see that we implemented the mute and the solo button with that so if i select the micro track here clicking mute and solo will work on that track if i want to keep that separated on the device so have a different selected track on my device than in bitwig i can go here in the studio pane and there you see there is a section for my script here our mox f script and you will see there is something called micro and this is our cursor track we created this is the name we gave the cursor track in the code and you can also navigate it here so you will see i move here the cursor track and it's following in Bitwig. But there is now also here something this pin and if I press that then our cursor track on the device is pinned to that base track. So if I now change the selection here in Bitwig you will see it will stay with the base. So if I now click on mute it will still work on the base track. So by using this pin feature, you can use your device separately. So the advantage of that is you can have multiple devices and control different tracks. And there is also API support for that. So you can also pin a track by using your device. And if you look into the pinnable cursor interface, you will see this interface is implemented both by the cursor track and by the pinnable cursor device, which we will talk about later. And it has the property is pinned and how we use a boolean property we already saw in a transport tutorial so you can use that to press a button on your device and to pin down the track okay now back to our main topic today which is the remote parameter banks it's pretty similar to what we did in the last tutorial about track banks in a similar way you can create device banks on a track so you could monitor all the devices you have on all of your tracks in your page track bank but this might be much too much so what we will do is only look into following the selected device on your select track track and to do the so there is a function which creates such a pinnable cursor device on your cursor track so we have saw the cursor track in the last tutorial already you can create this and this has similar parameters as we saw with creating a cursor track so you should give it an idea a name name is also the thing that it is used again in this pinnable area we saw just before since there are devices which use layers which has also the ability to use sense so you can give sense and you have a follow mode so the follow mode gives you different options how the cursor device is selected you can say i want to follow the one in bitwig but there are also options to say for example i want to always follow the first instrument on the track and from the cursor device finally we can create our bank for accessing the parameters of the device and there you give how much parameters you want to have in a page 
And something to note is that sadly this bank does not implement the bank interface but there are similar parameters as well available. So it's not get item here, it's get parameter and it's not get item count, it's get parameter count. And something to be aware of uh, in Bitwig 1 there were a lot of different parameter types you could get. There were envelope parameters, comments, modulation sources and macros but with a new remote concept this is all all deprecated and don't use them at all and if you don't know how to use macros for example with parameters I also made a tutorial about that which is also on my YouTube channel check that out to get a basic understanding how remote control pages work and how you configure them and use them in Bitwig. Okay, so how do we put that on the MOXF? This is what we did last time. We had here controlling panorama, volume, we could select tracks, move up and down in our pages and toggle the mute solo. So basically we want to use now the same controls for controlling something different. We want to control our parameters. So we need somehow to switch modes. And then I thought, why not use these six buttons? We only need two of them. So the first button should switch to this track mode and the second one to the device mode. This could be done then like this. So if I press the first one, as I said, we have the track mode and in the second one we have our remote control or device mode. And I thought we could do it in such a way we use now all the eight knobs. They work differently with the absolute and relative problem, but nevertheless it makes sense to always use eight controls to control the remote parameters because they are always organized in pages of eight. We want also to have the ability to switch the pages of this bank and uh, we also need the ability to switch devices. So I put on the first two buttons the up and down device navigation and the mute and solo. I put also a feature on there with the mute we can enable or disable the, the selected device and with the solo one we can toggle the device window. How do we tackle this? We can need something like a mode and for this mode I thought about an interface and the interface is as follow. So a mode should have a name so we can also display the user which mode is active and display him the name of this mode. We want also to toggle the indication. If you remember the last tutorial we indicated which tracks are selected which are currently controlled and we want to have that also for the parameters. But if the parameter mode is not active the this indication should be off so we need the ability to toggle this indication for both modes as well and the handle MIDI is the same handle MIDI function we saw last time for the track control we want to have this also for the remote control and depending on which mode is active we call this function so each mode we implement should have these three functions implemented looking into the track handler this has just two small adjustments first one is we implemented this new get name function which simply returns a string and we say this is called the track mode. And the second thing I changed is I have created a specific function for toggling the indication. So the indication in the previous tutorial was always activated here in the initialization of this track handler. So in that loop we had that as well. So that was removed and moved down there in a specific function. There we have the same loop and for the pattern and for the volume we enable or disable indication depending on the parameter we set. And the handle MIDI function was already there. This is unchanged. So we already implemented now this interface for the mode with the track handler. Now we want to have the same for our remote control. So I created a pretty similar remote control handler. And first we look in the main script and you see I load here now also this new control handler and we have also a new mode handler. Here we create cursor device as I showed in the slides before. Parameters of this create cursor device function is we have to give an ID. So this is also pretty similar to the creating the cursor track up there. We have to give it a name. We don't use sense in this tutorial and we want to follow the current selection when it is changed in Bitwig. And from that we create also a cursor remote controls page which has eight entries on one page and both parameters are given into this remote control handler. 
Looking into remote control handler, this is pretty straightforward. We store both parameters and there we have a similar loop which says we were interested in all the eight parameters and we are also interested in the enablement state of the cursor device and the window state of the cursor device. We have also a get name function to fulfill our new mode interface which gives us a name. We are also setting the indication of all eight parameters, enabling them or disabling them and we have a similar handle MIDI function which is basically also the same code as with the track handler but instead here we navigate over the cursor device select the previous and next cursor device we don't use these two buttons and with button number five and six we can select the next or previous page of our parameter pages and with the solo and the mute button we toggle the window and we toggle the enable state of the currently selected device. And here with the CC messages, remember also from last time our knobs, we can change the values. So for all eight parameters, we change the values, but we have to be aware that these are absolute and these are relative. So we use the different commands to fulfill that. So that's already the implementation of the remote control page. So there's one last thing to look into is the mode handler. And if you see how it is used, we have here the mode handler as a global variable and we create here the mode handler and as a parameter we give in all the modes so this is also easily extendable if you want to create more modes simply write a new class which fulfills the mode interface and add it here to this array and now our handle MIDI function has changed a bit. So here we don't have the track handler anymore. Instead, the mode handler takes care about handling the MIDI of the currently active mode. And that's a change here in our main script. Looking at how the magic works in the mode handler, it's also pretty simple. So the mode handler gets all the modes. It sets as the active mode the first one, which it gets from the array. And this active mode function is also pretty simple. We store the active mode, which we get as a parameter. We show a notification and we simply get for this notification the name of the active mode and we update the indications. And also update the indication is pretty straightforward. We disable on all modes the indication, but for the active mode we enable it again. And finally, we have the handle MIDI function checks for the two buttons to switch the mode. So if we push the first A button, we say we activate the first mode. And if we activate the second one, we activate the second mode. And we need now to handle the MIDI of the active mode. So if you fall through there, no button was pushed, we check handle MIDI of the active mode. So let's test it out in Bitwig. If I can switch the mode, I switch to the device mode. You see we get the display that it's the device mode and you see also that the indication has changed it's now on the device on the selected device and if I go back to track mode you see the indication will move back to the track and we will also get the name of the mode and we will also test our device mode we can change now the parameters with our knobs that also works nicely and we can switch the pages so it moves through the different pages we then can control. And with the first two buttons, we can also move between the different devices. And for the devices, also the mute button does enable the device. And we can also show up the window if the device has a window. So that was a pretty straightforward tutorial. You knew a lot of stuff from the previous one and you see if you look here what the currently code base is. As I said in the start of the episodes, there is no thing like a simple script. And if you use it, you might think, oh, it's very easy, not much functionality, no sequences or nothing, but already for such a simple script, we have a lot of code there. So it's always a very good idea to keep that organized. and this this code base I think is very good and very easy to extend. And until next time, write some funky code.